So today I am going to show you how to take a bunch of random samples and turn it into an amazing and ethereal instrument like this. Today I am going to show you a feature of Sampler that I am willing to bet you did not know even exists. It is one of many, many updates made to Live's software with the release of Live 12. It is an awesome feature that frankly has been standard on most other samplers for 30 years, but our sampler is a little behind. But now that we've caught up, we can do some really cool and interesting and funny things with it. Now, if you want the exact instrument that I am making in this video, it is a part of my new all-in-one bundle. It's an easy way to download all of my free racks. And in addition, it's going to have exclusive instrument and audio effect racks like this. It's a one-time purchase, but you're gonna get every update to it free of charge. It is an easy and accessible way to support this channel if you're interested in the work that I'm doing here, teaching you how to make better sounds and songs using stock plugins in Ableton Live. So without further ado, let's talk about Round Robin. So for this technique, the first thing that you're going to need is a bunch of random instrument recordings. In my case, I recorded my acoustic guitar, a wood flute, a kalimba, my voice, and a fretless bass. And then from there, I loaded them all into Sampler. And that's where we're going to jump into the tutorial. So that way you don't have to watch me record things for 20 minutes. You're welcome. The next step that we actually want to do is we want to turn on Round Robin. Now, this is the feature that allows you to play only one sample at a time for a given note range, but cycle through those samples. So for example, if I hit C3 and I hit it multiple times, it's going to keep cycling through any sample that C3 covers. And in this case, the behavior is set to forward, meaning it will just move forward through all those samples. However, I can set it to backward, I can set it to other, or I can set it to random. I'll set it to random. And this is where it gets really fun and really interesting, because then if I just start playing some nice chords on the piano, every single note is going to be a different sample every single time. And honestly, if I were to just like write some nice chords with that, I have an In Love With A Ghost song, so awesome. If you didn't know, the sample tab can be customized to individual samples needs. The pitch oscillator, filter global, and the modulation tab, all of those are global, meaning that they are going to process all the samples coming through. But in the sample tab, you can have individual controls. So for example, if I go ahead and solo the kalimba, I'm going to set it up to have a loop so that it's going to loop a small portion of this sample for a long release. And I can set up where that loop occurs. I can put it more towards the beginning if I really want to hear it. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for one of the voices. And I'm going to go ahead and do it for just one of the flutes as well. So there's a 50-50 chance that a flute will loop and a voice will loop or it won't. So I'm going to go to the filter global tab and I'm going to open up the release. This is going to allow samples that have a longer tail to hang out. I could literally do that all day. It's so fun. Let's talk about gluing this whole thing together. 
Now, one way that we can do that is to start to separate out the voices by panning them. We can do this one of two ways. We can either pan individual samples to a specific point, or we can go to the filter global tab and we can select panning random. And I'm just gonna crank it. And we're gonna hear every time a new note plays, it gets panned to a different point in the stereo field. Now to help it have a sense of space, I am going to add reverb to it using a rack that I have put together. And I will go ahead and just create a chain and I'll set this up to have some macros. Now, the other additional feature that I want to add is the FM oscillator. This, for some reason, feels sometimes like a controversial feature of sampler, uh, especially when I start to show it to my students, because this oscillator can feel really unwieldy, especially if you aren't super familiar with FM synthesis. However, the key to using this oscillator is that a little goes a long way. And I have it set to the triangle waveform. And I'm just going to start to bring in the oscillator and have it start modulating each sample based off of a course value of one, which means that this oscillator is modulating at the same rate as the incoming MIDI note. So if it is, say, for example, C3, it is modulating the frequency of the sample at a rate of roughly 260 cycles a second in the shape of a triangle. Now, if you do that a ton, it's going to sound like a nightmare. But if you do it just gradually, a little bit, it is going to sound like you've added brass. And how you change that ratio really changes the sound. And there's so much expression to be had with that. I'm gonna add one final piece of modulation to this instrument. So I am in the modulation tab of Sampler and I'm going to activate LFO2. And from the long list of parameters, I am going to select sample offset. Now you might have looked at this and glanced over it in the past because Frankly, as a title, it's not super descriptive in regards to what it is actually doing. But what it's essentially doing is changing the start point for sample playback. And so that can be really cool when you apply that with a random waveform. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just crank it up and play. And what we're going to hear is that not every single note is going to have the strong attack. Instead, it's going to start some notes somewhere in the middle of sample playback. And so it's going to be softer or have a different timbre. It's adding another degree of randomness. And with the width control, I can make it stereo, and it's going to process the signal coming from the left channel and the right channel separately. Wildly cool. Now the final steps when making an instrument like this is to set up macros. So I'm going to highlight the rack that I am using here as well as my sampler and I'm going to group it together and hit the show hide macro controls toggle and I'm going to set up some controls. So the first one that I'm going to go ahead and set up is just the cutoff point or the filter. I'm gonna to go to the pitch oscillator tab and I'm going to set up the volume as a macro. I'm going to set up the course as a macro as well. And I'm also going to set up the volume to velocity 
as a macro because that's a useful feature with an instrument like this. I'm going to set up an randomization as a macro. Then I'm gonna go over to the modulation tab and I'm going to map the rate of the LFO to macro six. And I'm also going to map the on off to macro six as well. I need to open up the map control and I'm going to set the on for LFO to, to be one and then zero. So that will then at the lowest rate of the LFO, it will also toggle it off. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up a macro here for our reverb. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place a utility device at the very, very end of our rack. And I'm going to map the gain to eight as an overall volume control. And I'm done. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, this instrument is a part of my new all-in-one bundle, and it is the easiest way that you can support the work that I'm doing on this channel. The link is in the description below. And as always, please consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. I'm really working hard to try to grow this channel to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2025. Till next time.